reflection today is called Teach Like Christ from the Gospel. Blessed are they who are persecuted for the sake of righteousness, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Jesus said to his apostles, Do not think that I come to bring peace upon the earth. I have come to bring not peace but the sword. Whoever loves father or mother more than me is not worthy of me. And whoever loves son or daughter more than me is not worthy of me. Whoever does not take up his cross and follow after me is not worthy of me. Whoever finds his life will lose it. And whoever loses his life for my sake will find it. Whoever receives me, whoever receives you receives me. And whoever receives me receives the one who sent me. And whoever gives only a cup of water to one of these little ones to drink because he is a disciple. Amen, I say to you, he will surely not lose his reward. Now Christ did not stomp about making noise, keeping people from their homes or their sleep or their work. He taught in places meant for teaching. And by doing this, he changed the world. He had far greater iniquities to fight against, far greater odds against which to fight, and far greater barriers than anything that exists today. But because he did it peacefully, with education based on the learning of the centuries, they all knew the Bible and the Torah. He was just presenting the ideas and concepts differently, uniquely. And the chief rabbis, Sanhedrin, didn't care for this at all. Now imagine, he was teaching the exact same scriptures that these people had heard their entire lives. But because of how he interpreted them and taught them according to the law of Moses, this was something that none of the priests or Pharisees, or especially the Sanhedrin, would do because then they would lose their power lose their authority in the church, as everyone would know the law, and no one would have to go to them for their interpretation. Because what was happening in the church at that time is each priest, each Pharisee, and each Sanhedrin, when they came to power, they got to interpret the law according to their needs. So the laws and rules changed according to the priest according to the time of their needs. Jesus also taught all of the scriptures in a personalized way, as if God was present with you in that moment. This was mind-blowing. God with us, caring about us, our day, each event, how we each behaved. Previous rabbis taught God as far off, way over there, uncaring, angry if you did bad things, but otherwise very distant and uncaring of what happened to you and what you did. No wonder the children of Israel kept breaking faith with him with instruction like that. Jesus spoke of a loving, caring, attentive father, as a real father would be and how the Son would be even more loving, for he would have come down and become human. He'd have spent time as a human. Imagine how new and mind-boggling this would have been. Then Jesus added the factor of love. Love thy neighbor as thyself. Always love with this guy. And then love one another as I have loved you. He stressed justice, honesty, fidelity to self and God, thus to one's faith, and caring for all those who have less, and that your eternal advancement to the kingdom of God was reliant upon how well and how much you served others. Totally unique. World-destroying for many who had been led to believe that they could buy their way to eternal advancement. 
and they'd never have to darty their hands or see those horrible darty poor anymore. They'd even have set higher temple taxes laid so the poor would never be at synagogue when the better citizens were there. Remember, give unto Caesar that which is Caesar's, and give unto God that which is God's. That was all about paying the worship or temple tax, which was designed specifically to keep the poor away from the rich, with the complicit assistance of the Romans. And this is still in practice today at many churches, who charge fees to the poor for the use of his facilities for sacraments such as funerals, marriages, baptisms, despite there being admonitions from the Vatican to show charity to all our children. Do not choose balance in your books over the souls of any person for any sacrament. Our job is to provide these, our children, every sacrament that he or she is eligible to receive. Do not send anyone away for want of funds. And what's interesting here is the month after this was posted in 2016, I am denied the right of mass of Christian burial from the church of which I was a member, as the pastor was one who had lost his ministry, and look more to the income of each interaction than to the humanity of the sacrament. And I wasn't going to be using his services or any of the priests. I was only to use the church. Friends who were priests would have presided at the mass. Musicians would have been donating their services. I would only have been using the church. And for that, this pastor wanted to charge $500. But Jesus didn't protest the, behave, the ill behavior of the Jewish hierarchy. He just allowed his teaching to speak loudly, condemning them by their failure to adapt, failure to abide by the law. He didn't stomp about. He didn't make an ass of himself or his followers. He didn't endanger anyone else. The one time a follower harmed a guard, he healed that guard, and by that act, the guard understood. The scales fell away from his eyes, and he was a believer from that moment until his own death. And so with all of the advantages of technology and communication now, why do so-called faith leaders spread dissension, hate, and separation when they could be like Christ? a great prophet in Islam, as well as Judaism and Mormonism, and teach so as to spread love, bringing people together, and find every way in which we are the same, all in his image, versus different. Why not be more like Christ, and less like a 15-year-old girl who just got caught smoking by their mother, stomping around and sitting and refusing to move, throwing things, but then saying, well, I'll do it. Or, well, I didn't do it. And then calling all your friends so that they can do the same thing and just making your parents more upset. In this case, the government is the parent. And just working yourself up into a greater fuss. When there is the alternative, shown successfully in the 1960s, 60s, that no stomping, tantrums, throwing of concrete, violation of others' rights to privacy or, or enjoyment of their property. The example of Christ in the 1960s teach to unify. One person, one body, one voice. Teach to join together. Teach to communicate.